Hi there, this is Rob from Reason101.net and I'm here to show you how to create uh, a different kind of an effect. Uh, what it's going to be is it's going to be uh, a duplicated reverb and phaser effect, uh, which one, is, one of them is going to be sent to the front of your mix and the other one is going to be sent to the back. So you can separate out your effects based on whether they're in the front of your mix or in the back of your mix. So just to show you how this sounds, um, I have it all set up here. And uh, this is how it sounds from the front. And then this is how it sounds from the back. And then you can mix them both in. Okay, so let's uh, show you how to create this. Let's first delete this combinator. Bye-bye. And now all we're left with is just an initialized Thor patch. So first thing you're going to do is create a combinator. Inside the combinator, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I am going to create, um, let's see, we want to create a unison device. And then underneath that, we want to create um, a line 6.2 mixer. Then underneath that, we're going to create an imager. And underneath that, we're going to create, what are we going to create? We're going to create a reverb, advanced reverb. And then underneath that, we're going to create a phaser, because this is going to be a phaser effect. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to select these three devices. I'm just going to right click and duplicate the devices and tracks. So I've got two sets of them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the rack around and do a little bit of routing here. Uh, first off, what we want to do is we want to remove these wires. And we'll start from scratch. We're going to send our Thor sound device into the combinator. Send the combinator back out to the main mixer. Uh, from the devices, it's going to come from the line mixer to the devices. It's going to go into the unison device. The output of the unison device is actually going to go into something I didn't create. Uh, we're going to create an audio merger. Uh, so that's going to create our front and back split. So the output's going to go into the splitter. Then one split you're going to send to one of the imagers. Second split you're going to send to the second imager. The first imager's the output is going to go into the first reverb. Then the reverb is going to go into the phaser. And phaser is going to go back out to a channel on the line mixer. Same thing goes for this next set of devices. Easy enough. OK, so let's flip it around. I'm going to call this the front imager. I'm going to call this the front reverb. This is going to be our front phaser. And now the second set of devices is going to be our back imager, the back reverb, and the back phaser. Okay, so now that that's rooted, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a few settings. Since this is the front, what we're going to do is we're going to have this go almost completely mono. Same thing here, we're going to want this completely mono. And over here we want this completely wide. Okay, and on the reverbs, this is where things get kind of interesting. For this reverb, this is going to be your front. So what you want to do is you want to reduce the size. We'll leave it as a Hall algorithm and we'll leave the room shape as one. But we're going to reduce the size. Um, what we're going to do for the decay is we're going to reduce that down. We're going to um, keep the uh, high frequency dampening. We're going to raise that up a little bit. And the high EQ, we're going to bring that down a little bit. On the second reverb, we want to do the opposite. We want this to go into the back. So it's going to have a, a little bit of a longer decay. It's going to be more diffused. Um, so bring the size up pretty high. Uh, bring the decay up even more. Um, the high frequency dampening, we want to keep that relatively low. And the high EQ, we want to keep that relatively high. Um, on the dry wet knobs, let's bring it down because we don't want that to overpower the mix. So we'll bring it down to about 40, 42. Uh, somewhere around there. Okay, 
And uh, now it's time for a little bit of routing. For button one, actually, let me just delete all these first. Okay, so for rotary one, this is gonna be our front mix. For rotary two, it's gonna be our back mix. And then this will be our crossover for our two imagers. So let's open up the programmer. The front imager for rotary four is gonna be the crossover. For the back imager, same thing. Rotary four is gonna be the crossover. Then we're gonna to go to the line mixer. Rotary one is gonna be channel one's level. And rotary two is gonna be the channel two level. And we're gonna bring both of these down to 100. And now this is our front mix. And this is our back mix. And then this we can cross over the frequencies. Okay. So now let's grab our Thor. Uh, make sure that that has the focus on your track. And then inside the rack, you can start playing around with it. You can listen to the front mix only. Or you can listen to the back mix. Or you can listen to both of them together. And the other thing you can do, which is kind of fun, is you can change around the frequencies. Create a minor feedback here. And this one we can create, in the back, we can create a longer feedback. And a higher rate. So now you truly have two different effects for the front and the back. Maybe that feedback's a little high. So as you can see, you have a lot of control over um, what you can do with the uh, with different effects placed in different spaces in your mix. You can create even um, instead of phasers, you can put in delays where the phasers are. Um, you can change the algorithms to a room algorithm if you want. Um, bring it down to a room here and here, um, and keep the decays the same. And basically, it'll give you a whole new feel to the mix. Um, and you can also create more spaces than this. You can create something that goes just in your back left, uh, just in your front left, um, just in your right front and your right back. And you can have four different types of effects going into four different places in your mix. So I hope you learned a little bit, of, a little something here and I hope this uh, helps you out. Uh, in the coming days, what I am gonna do is put some of these patches and have them up on my site at reason101.net. Um, so I hope to see you there and feel free to download those patches and um, have a good time with it and good luck making some music. Thanks a lot and talk to you later.